AABIP video educational series, Tunneled Indwelling Pleural Catheter, Placement Overview. In this video, we will review the individual steps of placing a tunnel indwelling pleural catheter and highlight certain points of the procedure that may improve success. We will be placing a pleurex catheter for this educational video, but please note that the individual steps of the tunnel indwelling pleural catheter placement can be applied to other brands as well. After the patient is placed in the optimal lateral decupitus position with the target hemithorax facing up, the pleural space is evaluated with an ultrasound. The phase array ultrasound probe is manipulated until an optimal view is obtained. Here we can appreciate the lung, pleural fluid, and diaphragm in this ultrasound image. Once the optimal location is identified, the location is marked. This can be done with either a sterile marker or by leaving an imprint made by pressing the tip of a syringe onto the surface of the patient's skin. Next, an exit point is identified and marked. This is typically 5 cm anterior to the entry point. The entry and exit points are then anesthetized with 1% lidocaine. Although not required, anesthetizing the tunnel tract can be done and may improve patient comfort. The pleural tract via the entry point is also anesthetized with 1% lidocaine. Negative pressure is applied on the syringe when advancing towards the pleural space, and the lidocaine is injected at every 1 cm increment. Next, the finer needle, which is attached to a 10 cc syringe, is inserted via the entry site towards the pleural space. Negative pressure is applied on the syringe as the finer needle is advanced. Additional 1% lidocaine can be injected into the pleural tract for patient comfort. It is important to not change the direction of the finer needle and to remain above the rib when advancing the needle. Once pleural fluid is withdrawn into the syringe, the catheter over the finer needle is advanced into the pleural space and the needle is then removed. The J-tip guide wire is then inserted via the catheter into the pleural space. Be wary of any resistance when inserting the guide wire. If there is significant resistance, remove the guide wire and repeat the previous steps of accessing the pleural space with the finder needle. After the guide wire is inserted, the catheter is removed over the guide wire. Although not required, ultrasound can be used to confirm that the guide wire is positioned in the pleural space. Here we can appreciate the guide wire within the pleural space in this ultrasound image. Next, with the scalpel, 1 cm incisions are made at the entry and exit points. Of note, the incisions should be made above and below the wire, and not against the wire. These incisions should be deep enough to appreciate subcutaneous fat. The tunneler with the indwelling pleural catheter attached on the other end is inserted through the exit point towards the entry point via the subcutaneous trap. Once the fenestrate end of the pleural catheter is pulled through the entry point, the tunneler can be removed. The pleural catheter is pulled further to position the cuff inside the subcutaneous trap slightly towards the exit point. With the cuff closer towards the exit point, this will allow for easier removal. Next, the dilator is inserted over the guide wire, positioned coaxially with the guide wire and advanced into the pleural space. There's no need to advance the dilator the entire way into the pleural space. The dilator is then removed, leaving the guide wire in place. The peel away introducer is then inserted over the guide wire, positioned coaxially with the guide wire and advanced into the pleural space. Once the introducer has passed the parietal pleura, the peel away sheath is advanced over the introducer all the way into the pleural space. As the guide wire and introducer are removed, leaving the peel away sheath in position, a finger is used to cover the peel away sheath so that the pleural fluid does not leak through. The finger is removed and the fenestrated end of the pleural catheter is inserted through the peel-away sheath.
Once the pleural catheter is inserted all the way, the peel away sheath is snapped in half and peeled proximally. From time to time, the pleural catheter may need to be advanced further as the sheath is being peeled back. This process is continued until the peel away sheath is removed entirely. Sutures may be placed at the entry and exit points to prevent leaking of pleural fluid and to secure the pleural catheter, respectively. A foam catheter pad is placed underneath the pleural catheter with 4x4 gauze pads placed over it. Lastly, an occlusive dressing is placed over the tunnel indwelling pleural catheter.